Well, today is Pope Francis's second anniversary as head of the Catholic Church. He was elected at a time uh, when the Vatican was mired in a series of scandals. But uh, since ascending to the top job, the pontiff has been surprising the world with his relaxed style and Spartan lifestyle. Francis has been credited with breathing fresh life into the way the church relates to its billion followers and the rest of the world. And a large part of this is down to his desire to reform the church from within. Our correspondents in Rome, Natalie uh, Mendoza and Charlotte Devan Wetton, tell us more. Today is a special day at the Vatican. This group of parishioners has spent over 10 hours in a plane in order to celebrate the ordination of the first Catholic cardinal from Tonga, a Polynesian sovereign state and archipelago in the southern Pacific. But today is a very historical, very historical to us, our Tongans. We were so excited. It's, you know, it's so surprising. We, so amazing. We never thought of coming to Rome. At 53 years old, Soan Maffi is the youngest cardinal in the Catholic Church. But above all, he is a symbol of the renewal and openness of the church under Pope Francis. I think there's a great message for us, especially for me as a bishop, not to lock myself in the office all the time. The administration reach out to the poor and smell like sheep, as he said. <laughs> Little by little, Pope Francis is choosing new cardinals from Latin America, Africa, Oceania or Asia. By reducing the European presence, Pope Francis is changing the equilibrium at the top of the Catholic Church. Because it'll be these new cardinals who'll be voting for the next Pope. And already Pope Francis is warning them against living the high life and being ambitious. Since we humans, all of us at every stage of our lives, are inclined to jealousy and pride, since our nature is wounded by sin, nor are church dignitaries immune from this temptation, the Roman church has to set an example and to preside in charity. And to redirect the church onto a more charitable course, Pope Francis has set in motion an important number of reforms for the Roman Curia, otherwise known as the church government. Today, he has summoned to the Vatican cardinals from all around the world to discuss these reforms. The first point on the agenda is a delicate one, the finances of the Holy See. The Vatican Bank, it was too loose an arrangement so that it could possibly be used for money laundering. So to get that strictly in line with all the financial, the best international standards, that was one of the first objectives. We want to, uh, the accounts to be clear and uh, transparent so that everyone knows. But over and above the financial issues, it is the entire governmental structure that is preparing for some profound changes. The main organizations of the Roman Curia are to be merged into two ministries. The first one will deal with the Catholic congregation, lay and non-religious groups, and all matters concerning family life. The second will be dedicated to justice and peace. And something completely new, the creation of an organization dealing with the environment and ecology. Marco Politi has been covering the Vatican for over 30 years. And today, he sums up the scope of these changes. The challenge is a revolution in the way the Roman Curia works, to have a Curia that is more attentive to what is going on in churches on a local level, and above all, to start on a decentralization. Changes that have been called for by the Catholic community, who have been following the Pope closely. This afternoon, hundreds of people are waiting for him outside a parish on the outskirts of Rome. Gaspare Pelaya has come with his family, who have waited for hours in the hope of just a quick glimpse of the Pope and to support his reforming ways. The church absolutely has to adapt itself to our times. We are in 2015. Certain aspects of the church have remained stuck in the past. But now it must adapt. Pope Francis is leading this battle and we hope he will succeed. Despite the pontiff's popularity, the path to change remains long and arduous. The implementation of the reforms will take time. The publication of the decree reforming the Curia will not take place until next year.